Praise the Lord, everybody. Dr. Betty Minus Morell coming to you again with Bible study Wednesday night. Bible study. <clears throat> I love the word of God. The Bible said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And we're so glad to come before you one more time with the word of God in Bible study. I want to give honor to my pastor, Bishop Wallace E. Grimes and our First Lady Jennifer Grimes from Undenominational Pentecostal Holiness Church in James City, New Bern, North Carolina. Just want to thank God for just another opportunity to be before you. Lesson two, <clears throat> I'm going to still be talking about trusting God no matter what. And we will again be coming from the book of Habakkuk. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for another opportunity. I thank you for being here in this place at this time. I'm asking you, God, to speak through me with clarity and with the anointing that somebody might be blessed, that somebody might be healed, saved, and delivered, God. And I give you the glory and I give you the praise in Jesus name. Amen. Trusting God no matter what. And we're coming from the book of Habakkuk. We would not be studying the book of Habakkuk today had Habakkuk not obeyed God and written down what God had told him and showed him. So we're going to begin with chapter two in the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk had uh, taken his concern to God because he was disturbed that his people, the nation of Judah, were becoming more and more wicked. And God was seemingly not doing anything about it. He was upset with God for letting all of this evil going on. And so as chapter two opens, we find the prophet waiting and watching for God's answer. And we remember that God did answer Habakkuk. If we look at verse two of that second chapter, God tells the prophet, write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run who readeth it, for the vision is not yet. Ha! The vision is for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it. The vision is yet for an appointed time. And so as chapter two opens, we find the prophet waiting and watching for God's answer. And God does speak to him in chapter two, verse two. He tells the prophet, write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run who readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. But the just shall live by faith. And so this writing was to be permanent, so that generation after generation 
could read it. The message was to be plain written so that anybody could understand it. And it was to be public so that every person running past the tablets on display could get the message immediately. You see, Habakkuk wasn't the only person in Judah who needed this message. It was for the survival of the entire nation, and it was his obligation to share it. And when you think about it, what better place to make sure that the message is still speaking today than for it to be written in the Holy Word of God? For God said that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. And so God makes it clear to Habakkuk that earthly empires will rise and fall, but he, hmm, the everlasting God, will be forever on the throne. That's why we can put our trust in God. So be encouraged because the Bible tells us that the just shall live by faith, not by circumstances or by our observations or our reasoning, but by our faith in God that he will do what he said he will do. You see, we are not only saved by faith, but we are instructed to live by faith. The Bible tells us in 1 John, that fifth chapter, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. To live by faith means uh, to believe God's word, to depend on his power and trust him, no matter how we feel or what we see with the natural eye, or what the consequences may be. Habakkuk knew that terrible times were coming for his people and that their only hope was to trust God and accept his will no matter what. So, to the faithful Jews in the land, God would be a refuge and strength. But to the godless Jews and to the godless Babylonians invading them, God would be their judge, punishing them for their sins and giving them what they deserve. The Babylonians were a nation that was puffed up in pride. They were greedy and cruel and, and evil. They plundered and stole land that wasn't theirs in order to build a vast empire that glorified them. But God said it won't last. And how many know that only what you do for God is going to last? The city of Babylon was once an architectural marvel, but their great projects were for nothing. It's all gone now. And today, if you want to see what Babylon was like, you have to visit a museum. The fall of Babylon the Great is a reminder to us that whatever man builds without God cannot last. Judah, sad to say, were also guilty of idolatry. For during the declining years of the kingdom, they worshiped the gods of the surrounding pagan nations. And they knew better. They had been warned by the prophets time and time again against this flagrant abomination against God's law. But the people refused to repent. Idolatry may seem like a sin that we modern people do not commit. But let me make it very clear that 
whatever you delight in, whatever you are devoted to, give your allegiance to, uh, sacrifice for, or whatever you can't bear to be without, become your idol. Worshiping idols is not just bowing down to man-made images. It is also trusting in what one has created by one's own power and believing it's your sustainer. We say we worship God and trust him and, 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 and yet we put our trust in our bank accounts and our possessions and our businesses and our careers and our relationships, our successes and even our ministries. Mm, thank you, Lord. And even in our ministries, yes, we have to be careful because when you put selfish gain before the work of the Lord, then you are glorifying yourself, not the God you should be serving. Amen, somebody. When we put our confidence in these things instead of the creator of these things, then we cross over into idolatry, which is an abomination to God. We cannot mistreat God's people and expect to escape God's judgment. God has told us in First Chronicles, touch not my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. We better heed that. It may take time and it may seem like the wicked is getting by. But eventually I come to tell you judgment will fall on them. What Babylon did to others, God would do to her. In other words, you will ultimately reap what you sow. And while all of us appreciate beautiful and useful things, it's one thing to own things, but quite something else to be owned by those things. So all of us need to make sure we do not fall into the sin of idolatry. Because our God is a jealous God who wants to be the first and the last, who wants to be our everything. And the Lord knows those who are his. So we've got to make sure that we give God what's due him, all of us. And then chapter two closes with God given Habakkuk the last assurance. And the verse goes like this, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. And this lets us know that God is always sitting on the throne and he always has everything under control and is always working on the behalf of his children. And I'm glad to tell you that God is the only true and living God who can save us and deliver us in these perilous times. So what do we do? We do like Habakkuk. We simply trust God no matter what. Wait on his answer and accept his will knowing that he is sovereign. He is a sovereign God. Chapter three, the last chapter, we find that Habakkuk grasped the significance of the assurances God gave him. God was going to take care. He was going to take care of the wicked uh, of both Judah and his enemies. And the just, he promised Habakkuk, shall live by faith. And after hearing this message, Habakkuk was transformed from being a warrior to being a worshiper. You see, 
Real worship comes out of a grateful heart. Just thinking of the goodness of Jesus over your life should usher you into worship. If you are grateful for all God has done for you, you are to, wherever you are, wherever you are right now, give God praise. All right, wherever you are. Thank you, God. You see, when Habakkuk started his book, he was down in the valley, confused and angry, wrestling with the will of God. But as God revealed his plan to him, though it was hard to accept, he trusted him and his faith in God was strengthened. Thank you, God. And though he trembled in fear, thinking about the terrible judgment to come upon his people, he exclaims in verse 18 and 19 of that third chapter, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. And how many of you can say that out there? And he will make my feet like hinds feet, dear feet. And he will make me to walk upon a, a high place. So in this closing chapter of this book, we find Habakkuk singing a prayer of praise to God for answering his prayer. Even though God had already told him that his people would be punished for their continued sinning and that it was not going to be a pleasant experience, he also assured Habakkuk that evil will not always triumph over the righteous. And in his time, in God's time, he would right all the wrongs. And aren't you glad about that? Oh, I thank him for that today. And though Habakkuk did not agree with how God was going to fix this problem, he accepted the will of God. Habakkuk would trust God no matter what. The God he knows is rich in mercy, but is also a just God. Habakkuk accepted the truth that his people deserved the punishment. His people needed to learn a lesson. Huh. And I don't know about you, but I thank God today that uh, I did not get what I deserved. I too deserve punishment for my sins. And, but instead, God gave me grace and he gave me mercy. And for that, I am so grateful. Is anybody out there grateful for God's grace and his mercy toward you? Thank you, God. Oh, bless his name in the place. And after hearing from God and seeing the glory of God, worship lifted Habakkuk to a high place. And the joy of the Lord became his strength. That he felt like a deer bounding confidently on the mountain heights. That's what the joy of the Lord will do for us. It will lift us high above our circumstances above our doubts and our fears to a place of unwavering trust in the God of our salvation. So what took Habakkuk from the valley to the mountain are the same disciplines that can take us there. Prayer, vision, faith, and worship. And even though he knew the people of Judah deserved to be punished, Habakkuk understood that God's chastening was necessary and would ultimately work out for the nation's good. And when you really look at it, God did show mercy to the Jews, for he preserved them while they were in captivity. And in due time, then permitted a remnant to return to their land to reestablish their nation. When Habakkuk looked ahead, he saw a nation heading for destruction. And that frightened him. 
But when he looked inside of himself, he saw his helplessness and his weakness. And when he looked around him, he saw his nation on the binge of destruction. But when he looked up in faith, he saw a great big God and all of his fears vanished. To walk by faith means you focus on the greatness of God, not on the greatness of your problems, regardless of the situation. Now, now fast forward to this day and time. This world, this world like Habakkuk's day has turned a deaf ear to the warnings that we need to turn back to God, turn back to righteous living, turn back to true worship. If we don't, we too can expect God's wrath. No nation that continues sinning stands exempt from God's discipline. For the Bible says that he takes down nations and world leaders and church leaders. And he sets them up as he pleases. Because he is the sovereign God. He does what he wants to, how he wants to, and when he wants to. And even in these uncertain and perilous times like Habakkuk, we must put our joy in the Lord. Our feelings must not be controlled by the events we see around us, but by faith and God's ability to protect and strengthen us even in these troubling times. And my sisters and my brothers, when nothing makes sense and our troubles seem more than we can bear, remember, God is our strength. Hmm. Strength like no other. Thank you, God. And as we come to the conclusion of this study of Habakkuk, we are reminded of this one thing, that God is never has been, nor will he ever be indifferent to the sins of mankind and to our cries and pleas for help. Ultimately, justice will prevail. The word of God says it and I believe it. The just shall live by faith. But we serve a long suffering, patient God, giving us time to get it right. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all of us come to repentance. So from this lesson, we are reminded that when we are burdened and troubled by the cares of this world, the first thing to do is to take it to God in prayer. Yes, Lord. And when you pray, believe that you will receive an answer. Then do like Habakkuk did. Don't leave God alone until he answers your prayer. He promised that he would answer you. Then when he answers you, you may not like the answer, but accept his will. Thank you, God. That means we're going to trust God to work everything out for our ultimate good. It means we're going to trust God to save us, mm. to deliver us, to protect us, to supply every need, even in the midst of these uncertain times. For no weapon, let me say that again, for no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. And all we have to do is trust God, no matter what. For the just, I got to keep saying it, shall live by their faith. This concludes our lesson on the book of Habakkuk. And I encourage you 
to read it for yourself. Prayerfully, you can read it with a greater understanding after this teaching. But if you don't remember anything else, remember that the just shall live by their faith. Until the next time, be blessed. And God, I thank you again for your word going forth. And I believe that it has blessed. And I believe that it has healed and delivered your people. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Be blessed. UPHC Church family and friends, your tithes and offerings and also donations can be sent by way of Cash App, PayPal, payment methods, or in the description. Join us for relevant biblical studies with informative topics via lectures and transforming teachings streaming every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Have a blessed week. Folks without homes, in the street. Drug habits, some say they just can't be muggers and robbers. No place seems to be safe. But if you be in my protection, every step of the way, I wanna say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yeah. It could have been me. As viewed here today, McAfee Tech is here for all your technical needs. Please contact us at 252-349-0180.